updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the new BMW X5, the facelifted model, the fourth generation. This is the G05. This is the XDrive 40i, which is priced at 65,000 USD, which translates to roughly 52 lakhs in India. This car costs more than double in India, around 1.3 crore rupees. Which means that we pay a lot more because of the taxes, of course. And I'm at Pebble Beach right now. This is the key of the vehicle, which is a new key. BMW has changed the key. This is to unlock the car. This is to open the boot of the car. This is to, I mean, I mean the siren sounds if you press this. And this is to lock the vehicle. New key looks nice, but I want the key with the screen, of course. This car actually is quite good looking because it has been updated in terms of design. It is a facelift. The grille is shut right now. It only opens when it needs to breathe and you can get the option of an illuminated grille as well which was only available with the X6. Straight away, let's open the engine bay. You get these strut braces. That is the engine, says BMW here. This is 6 because this is a 6 cylinder engine of course. There is insulation there and this is where washer fluid actually goes. Gas struts of course, let's shut this. This is actually based on the cluster architecture CLAR which underpins a lot of BMW cars these days. The headlights have been updated. They're sharper now, new DRLs of course, and they're slimmer as well. In fact, at night when you come close to the car, it automatically has this effect happening, which is kind of cool for the lights. Meanwhile, it says BMW LED on the inside and the grille has been updated as well. Not the grille actually, the bumper has been updated as well. So it has this, yeah, that is very much functional. If you notice, I don't know if you can notice it, but it is very much functional for better aerobates. Updated bumper actually is a hit or a miss. Here you obviously get the panel for ADAS. The radar is placed there. This is the towing hook. You get front parking sensors. In fact, parking sensors are almost everywhere because it gets park assist. A camera is placed here. Indicators functioning at the moment. So again, arrow shaped, which is quite nice. But the overall style or design of the car remains more or less the same. They have just sharpened it up here and there. You get the rain sensor there along with cameras for the lane keep assist and for the other ADAS functions. Coming to the side of the vehicle, this is almost 5 meters in terms of length. The wheelbase is almost 3 meters and it's sounding right now because I have the key in my pocket. But what is this fake stuff happening here? Not cool BMW, absolutely not cool. This is unnecessary. Tire size 275, yeah, 275, 45, 20s. In India, we get 305s because we get the M Sport variant. This is not the M Sport. In fact, it gets plain basic suspension. No adaptive stuff happening here. Camera placed here. Roof rails are very much functional. Privacy glass. In fact, in China, they also offer this car in long wheelbase, guys, which has the wheelbase same as the X7, but the X7 is obviously longer. You get rear wheel steering as an option, which is quite nice. Lot of sensors here for the parking sensors, of course. And Fessel Khan's fingers of truth. Impressed by these real exhaust. Let's just see the underbody there. Beautiful. Really very nice. Now, if you notice, the lights are actually blinking because here in the US, the indicators are red. They are not orange, which is a very US thing, honestly. Says X5 here. There's a camera right there. May is the registration month of this vehicle. California is the place where I am right now. X Drive 40i written right there. And you get an antenna on the top. There you can see that. High mounted stop lamp, a rear spoiler. In fact, the light does a beautiful effect at night when you come close to the car. It automatically locks and unlocks, which is quite cool. The boot is massive, 650 liters. It's so big, it's so big that I'm actually carrying a house right now. Yeah, look at the space. Amazing. And then there, split tailgate. Fun fact, it was BMW which actually made the third generation of the Range Rover, the L322. That's the reason the X5 and the Range Rover shared the platforms and both of them have a similar rain arrangement for the tailgate. Now, this obviously lifts up. There is no spare wheel, but I placed the parcel shelf there. There's a proper place for it. So, I had to remove the parcel shelf, of course. Otherwise, how will I fit so much stuff inside the car? Yeah, guys, think about that as well. See the attention to detail. It says BMW right here. I'm so sorry. The car is getting really dirty because I am right next to the beach. It's super duper duper windy right now. Let's get inside. When you unlock the car, it actually projects something on the floor and uh, it does it from the door handle. So that's a very typical BMW thing. This also seems to eliminate right now. Space at the rear is fine, but then by US standards, I feel space is not that much. Okay, under thigh support is poor, legroom and e room is fine. Let's just shut this. You get two USB-C charging sockets right there. You get a cigarette lighter as well. Four zone climate control air conditioning. Yeah, four zone, expectedly. AC vents placed here, AC vent placed here as well. There's this bracket with another USB-C charging socket. This is so that you can mount an iPad or a screen. You get a center armrest, which has twin cup holders. 
everybody gets a head, adjustable headrest, of course, seats are really nice in terms of quality, airbags written almost everywhere, handle to hold on to, hook, light placement, no height adjustable seat belts, and look at the dashboard, it is the same as before, but we get new screens now, which is fab, you get heating function for the rear seats, seat heating has been given to, let me just turn this off, and there, it turns off as well. Quality of the cabin is just phenomenal, like really nice quality. I don't know why the camera is on, but look at that dashboard. Phenomenal. The quality is actually fantastic. Nothing you can fault with. And here, you can see ambient lighting. This actually blinks if someone is coming in your line of path. Door pockets are really huge at the rear as well. And you get this sort of wood treatment. In fact, this car doesn't have the optional speaker. This is like the base variant, base trip. Still has a lot of features, but you can opt for Bovers and Wilkins sound system. Look at those words fly. How cool. Hey guys, do you like the BMW X5? Why are you flying away so fast? Anyways, like I was telling you, you have the option of getting Bowers and Wilkins sound system, which has diamond studs and all. It's absolutely crazy. The sky is the limit in terms of opting for whatever features you want in this car. But then it is also priced very attractively in the US. I hope that kind of pricing comes to India as well. You get request sensors on the doors. I think only the front doors have it. Probably the rear doors also have it. No, they don't seem to have it. And the projection from the doors is similar to the dead pedal. Yes, some storage space here. Automatic headlight controls. And the seats are really nice and comfortable. In fact, just notice the seat as well as the steering wheel. Memory function, of course. You can save up to two people's settings. Under thigh support is never an issue because that extends as well. So yeah, very nice and comfortable seats. I've been driving this car since past few days and I'm not tired at all. I can go on and on in terms of driving. Door pockets are massive, like really massive. These are the controls for the mirror adjustment. These are the controls actually for the mirror adjustment. This is for the power window. Come on BMW, give us metal switches now. I'm bored of this. And this is for the memory function. You press this and then you can actually move the co-driver seat too. By the way, the controls are given right here. It has four-way lumbar as well, four lumbar adjustment. Let me turn off the indicator. I love the way the dashboard has been done. This is a new thing which has been added. It says X5 here, so co-passenger knows exactly which car they are in. And this illuminates, sometimes white, sometimes blue. I think it depends on the ambient light color as well. Glove box is decent size. I filled it with a lot of stuff right now. In fact, it says airbag here. I don't know if airbag pops out from here. I don't even want to know or from here. But yeah, that's a weird position to write it. Here you obviously get a mirror and a light. Same is the case here as well. Microphone placed here, here. Let's open the sun blind of the sunroof. Now, this one doesn't seem to have the sky lounge, which will be coming to India, wherein there will be ambient lighting in the sunroof as well. Kind of cool. Beautiful camera. In fact, let me just change the camera view. There you go. Yes, I love the way the camera has been done on this car. So what I'll do is, firstly, I'll get out of this. Let's turn off the air conditioning, get into climate menu, which is very complex now, because this is for steering heat. So just one, yeah. And this is for seat heating. You have three settings or three levels for the same. And this is for seat ventilation, which makes a lot of sound. This is for air conditioning control, which has up to five fan speed. And then this is the direction of the flow, obviously. And the same is there for the co-passenger, but he does not get a steering, of course. So the climate menu is here, but this button is always there, which is kind of nice. This is a 14.9 inch curved screen, which is fantastic. And then showing me how much power and torque has been consumed in real time. The same screen which is there in a lot of BMW cars, so nothing much to see. Then you have this menu which has a lot of stuff, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto Connectivity, obviously everything is wireless here. And then you can go down and get into the ambient lighting and all, but obviously it doesn't have as many colors here, interior lighting is there. Ambience and how many colors? Currently not available. Oh, okay, it depends on the drive mode. So I'm actually going to get into comfort. Now please give it to me. Yeah, the old menu was better. This is a little cumbersome to operate. And here, color change. So, okay, let's just count three. Oh, again, I'm very bad at this. Three, six, nine, 12, 13, 15. 15 colors are there. Mercedes offers a lot more colors. So yes, BMW needs to work on that. You can see this color has actually changed because whenever I change the dry mode, this color also replicates the same, but I don't think you can see it in the day. Cluster is kind of poor because again, it's similar to what is there in recent BMW cars, but the tachometer is not that visible and depending on the drive mode, obviously this changes as well. These are the controls for operating the screen. So higher I can get into the content as well as the heads up display. That is the heads up display. I know you can't see it right now. And the rest of the car remains more or less the same as other BMW cars. We are going to get the M Sport steering wheel, of course, and M suspension and whatnot, because we are going to get the M Sport, hopefully, now, the good thing is it has got, yes, yeah, gesture controls. So, I'm just going to turn on the air conditioning. I'm going to talk to BMW. Hey, BMW. Sunle meri baat. Hey, BMW. I'm feeling cold. I'm raising the temperature. 
so it will be more comfortable right away. Let me know if it gets too warm for you. Chal jhoti, te ko kuch nahi aata. So what they have done is they have Americanized this whole system, so it's very American in the way it sounds. Yeah, it's no longer the soothing voice which we hear in India because obviously tailor made for America. Let's get into radio right now and just your control. Gesture controls work fantastically well, so they have been working on the software again and 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 they are making it much better. Here, obviously, you get a wireless charging pad, a USB charging socket, twin cup holders, and a 12 volt charging socket. This car is filled with so many charging ports, which is crazy. In fact, here also there is a USB C and there is illumination right here. Now there is some change here. They have removed the stop start button. They have also removed the okay that didn't look right. They have removed the gas selector. Yes, now you just have a button to select. I hate this completely. Traction control button, parking camera, and all that. Drive mode selection, downhill assist, auto hold, electric parking brake. This 22 year old iDrive controller is still there. Thankfully, okay the name of something panic. By the way, the engine heated so much it was like don't open the engine right now. Do it at your own risk. Anyway, straight away we get into reverse, reverse parking camera, and then I can get into more 3D view. Look at this beautiful 3D view. Okay, why doesn't it let me move it like that? Yeah, I I wish it could have just let me move it like that. But actually, it matches the car, but it doesn't match the wheels. And in terms of wheel options, there are eight wheel options. It's in reverse. It's showing me that. In fact, I give an indicator. It shows that as well. So yeah, that's some crazy attention to detail. Eight wheel options. Four are actually paid. 22, 22 inch size. You can obviously select. Beautiful camera. Really nice. But this screen, this screen. Most of the interior is the same as new BMW cars. In fact, this has changed, and I think the AC vents are just too small. Some physical buttons have been given. Thankfully, you really need it. Volume controller, specifically speaking. But yeah, they're reducing buttons, and I don't like it at all. Now let's quickly use the wipers. Okay, that's a lot of spray. It not only bathes the windscreen, it also bathes the other side of the car. This is obviously auto dimming. Says airbag here. Says airbag almost in every place. And look at the level of comfort. I think headrest has this sort of a pillow as well, which is kind of smooth and soft. And I love the quilting on this. Amazing seats. I hope we get these seats in India because the quality is phenomenal. It says start backup assistant. So yes, I will decide that. Monitor your surroundings. And now what it is going to do? I don't even know what it is going to do. Vehicle is steering, so it has self park. It has got all that. It's able to replicate the way you park the car in reverse, which is kind of nice. So it's got forward assistance as well. So all these new features and tech has been added in this car. But does it drive the same as before? Let's start driving right away. Okay, first things first. Let's turn off the air conditioning and we get into sport display. Before that, we get into sport mode. Traction control off. Your DSC off. Into drive mode, and it's time to launch. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Oh, traction has to be on, otherwise launch control won't work. Okay, we get back for the sport displays. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. No, launch control isn't working. That is zero to hundred kilometers per hour in five point four seconds, which is zero point one second faster when compared to before. So this is the same forty i engine which also powers the X seven and in updated form. It is more powerful, has more torque as well. So the same engine as the X seven, which is a three liter straight six petrol engine, which is producing three hundred seventy five horsepower and the torque output is five hundred forty newton meters. So the increase is of around forty horsepower when compared to before, and the torque is also increased by roughly ninety newton meters. So this car is producing three seventy five horsepower and five forty. 40 newton meters of torque. The older car was producing 335 horsepower, and the torque output there was 450 newton meters. So obviously the engine feels more punchy when compared to before. It's super duper duper refined. You can't hear a thing. Only thing is when you get into the top end of the rev range, there it becomes quite sporty, and it's mated to an 8-speed torque converter automatic gearbox, which is quick with shifts. Yeah, it is very fast with shifts. But this engine is the base engine for this car because there's also I think a 50i, there's a 50e, there's a 60i as well. I think the 50i has become the 60i now, which also gets a 48 volt mild hybrid system. So basic change to the engine is the 48 volt mild hybrid system, which actually gives it e-boost and regenerative braking as well, resulting in better performance. Mid range is nice. Top end is really very good. It feels amazing in the top end. There's so much punch in this engine, in spite of it being the base engine. And in the US, it does not come with the diesel engine. Yeah, it doesn't come with the diesel engine. You can obviously take manual control of the things, but the triptronic function has gone now because obviously the gear lever is gone completely. The buttons are here, which don't let you shift gears like that. 
yeah red lines almost at 7000 rpm so this engine likes the top end as well very smooth very refined beautiful engine even the steering wheel is actually quite nice it's accurate it's light at low speeds but at higher speeds it does weigh up quite well around the corners body roll is very well contained now this being the base obviously does not get air suspension or adaptive dampers they call it dynamic damper control or something of that sort sport suspension you get all that as an option as well with air suspension the advantage is that you can raise the ride height and decrease it as well so at 120 km per hour the car automatically squats down by 20 mm and you can raise the ride height by up to 40 mm if you're driving off road which means 60 mm is what is the height difference you can make to the car with air suspension of course but if you're looking for power get the x5m because the x5m produces 617 horsepower it also gets a 48 volt mild hybrid system they had to put that mild hybrid just so that they can comply with recent emission norms of course and uh, going forward there'll be a plug-in hybrid as well 617 horsepower means 0 to 100 km per hour comes up in 3.7 seconds and a top speed of 250 km per hour pay more to BMW for the M drivers package and you can increase the top speed to 285 km per hour which is insane for an SUV it doesn't feel heavy it weighs more than 2 tons and it can tow up to 3.3 tons yet it just does not feel heavy at all and braking performance is actually quite nice it's very sure footed the brakes there's good amount of grip as well you guys doing well at the back sure she looks like she's going to pass out <laughs> right foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator maybe this car is not equipped with launch control yeah maybe because it's the base version now but bmw offers launch control in all of its cars so that's kind of surprising handling is very good for an suv of this size weight and what not but let me tell you something straight forward the ride is very good here but not so good in india why well the roads are good here firstly and secondly bmw is offering higher sidewall on the tires for the us market for the base engine and obviously you have the option of increasing the tire size all the way till 22 as well but the problem is that uh, on these roads you will never feel any bump or any issue at all but in india there are obviously a lot of bumps and we get low profile tires because we only get the m sport variant here there are a lot of other variant options as well and the higher sidewall definitely results in better ride but over bad bumps now you can feel a bit of the tires and the road it it kind of crashes through there so that's a slight bit of an issue so you have to be very very careful when giving this car the beans over bad roads because it is not able to absorb everything effortlessly Okay while we cross this construction zone let me cool off a bit because it's quite hot at low speeds this car is brilliant yeah it's so easy to drive the gearbox never stutters very smooth very nice and the gearbox is also very fast with shifts it's only vocal in the high end of the rev range and insulation levels are mind boggling you never hear a thing in this car it is just so smooth it's just so refined obviously it's a bmw right and this car is actually manufactured in the usa in fact usa is the home country for manufacturing of the x5 the x6 the x7 the x3 the x4 oh my god all the x models are actually made in the united states well how is that possible so us is obviously suv crazy things have to be big here so bmw decided to put a plant here in the us itself in the in south carolina which is the master major plant and this car is actually assembled in six other different locations one of them obviously being india and uh, they are manufacturing all the suvs in the us other than the x1 because obviously it's too small for us roads and there are three drive modes on offer but you can call them more than three so there's a comfort mode which is a good blend of eco as well as sports there's a sport and there's a sport individual which lets you make a few changes here and there but i was quite surprised this car doesn't have any trick suspension it's just like standard steel springs no adaptive dampers no air suspension because when i go into the menu to make changes i can make changes to the steering and the drive train the drive train is obviously the engine as well as the gearbox so it will hold on to a gear if you want that to happen and then it can get a little boomy there but still it's that smooth nice bmw sound which you will really enjoy and then there's eco pro mode as well and then you can decide how you want the coasting to work and all that so fuel efficiency is somewhere between 5 to 10 km per liter depending on your driving style drive it like a nut fuel efficiency is going to go down really fast now the us market is so big for bmw that the x5 outsells the german market where which is the home market for the x5 as well as the whole european market which is a freaking continent yeah sales are much higher in the us alone when compared to europe that is the kind of demand the x5 has here which is absolutely insane and the x5 is actually the very original suv the german luxury suv which obviously bmw thought about first and called it sav sports activity vehicle meanwhile obviously audi and mercedes copied with the q7 and the gl later the gl became the gls 
but that happened much later bmw decided we are going to make an make a luxury suv first and obviously that is the reason why it is so popular because this is the very original let me just downshift now in india we obviously get the diesel the diesel is definitely going to be my pick but the price difference between the petrol and diesel in india is very small it's like very chintu mintu i think the price difference is roughly 2 to 3 lakhs and with the facelift they've increased the prices by around 3 4 lakhs in the us but in india the price difference is going to be around 8 9 lakhs between the pre facelift and the facelift model get the facelift is much better other than this cluster which is like kind of rubbish i really don't like it especially the instrument cluster because i can't see a proper tachometer here at all now i'm i'm just going to try to get into manual mode i don't think there's a manual mode oh there it is we are in manual now over these bumps you can feel a lot inside the cabin and here we go no it's not hold on holding on to a gear so that's also a little bit disappointing although the heads up display is really very clear and i can see it crystal clear as well the way it maintains its line around the corners is absolutely unbelievable for a car of this size and obviously it's x drive they also have s drive for the us market yes a rear wheel drive version of the x5 which is obviously cheaper but only available with the 40i otherwise people only opt for the x drive because globally x drive is the one which is sold because this is an suv it cannot be like a mahindra tha rear wheel drive This car actually has more rear bias power delivery. Yes, you can feel that. So it doesn't understeer. It doesn't really oversteer either. It has a nice balance, but you can feel it, that it's more rear bias the power delivery, which is actually nice. And as I see it, I think the X5 is still the very best car in the segment because although the GLE is nice and the Q7 is also good enough, nothing really beats the X5. The X5 is just phenomenal in the way it performs. Great handling, great performance, amazing quality, and. it's a bmw at the end of the day which has a lot of features very comfort oriented extremely practical and this one is going to be priced around rupees 1.3 crores on road mumbai when it's going to be launched in august actually they were uh, planning to launch it i think sooner maybe but i think they have a lot of stock of the old x5 which they want to get rid of first the current car the pre facelifted model is priced at rupees 1.2 crores on road mumbai and this car was first launched in 1999 this is the fourth generation model the lci the life cycle impulse the facelift which was actually launched just 2 3 months back in 2023 this fourth generation model was unveiled in 2018 and launched in 2019 and trust me it takes the whole goal post way forward because of the quality the performance and everything else so guys this is my vlog of the BMW X5 facelift it is phenomenal what a car if you like this vlog make sure to give the thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye